Well, well, welcome to today's talk, Friday the 22nd of September. Now, I'm going to be giving pretty conclusive proof today from a peer-reviewed published paper that mRNA from the COVID vaccines, the mRNA vaccines, has been found in breast milk. And this is consistent with other studies, so there's no real debate about this anymore. The mRNA from the vaccines goes into breast milk, probably for the first 48 hours after vaccination. Now, this is proof of systemic distribution of the vaccines. Now, local and systemic are the converse. So a local would stay where it's put. Systemic means it goes everywhere. Now, the reason this is important to me and, and to you, uh, if you've been vaccinated especially, is that we were initially told by all the people in authority, the regulatory bodies and our chief doctors and everything, that this would just stay local. It would generate a local immune response and it would all be gone perhaps within a few hours. We know that this is not the case. Now, the problem in my mind is the evidence for this has emerged over time. But these lipid nanoparticles, if these people had gone to the bother of talking to anyone who specialises in uh, pharmacokinetics, that they would have said, well, with this size of particle, it's likely to be distributed everywhere, or almost certainly to be distributed everywhere. Why did they blag it? That's the thing that really annoys me. If they don't know, they should have said they don't know. And it now turns out it's systemically distributed. So after mRNA vaccine, it goes to your liver, it goes through your heart, it goes to your in this case through the breasts, probably through your thumbs and through your big toes and through your ears. It, it probably goes everywhere. And uh, it's really a pity we weren't told that. Had I been told that, that would have completely uh, reversed my decision to get vaccinated. So that's why I'm pretty cross about this. Uh, now, in the initial trials, breastfeeding mums, pregnant women and uh, infants were excluded from the trials. Yet the regulatory bodies still decided to go ahead and give these vaccines, which weren't tested on pregnant mums, weren't tested on lactating mothers, breastfeeding mothers, weren't tested on infants, yet, despite this lack of testing, they decided to go ahead. That's a question they really need to answer. These vulnerable groups, vaccination was advised despite the fact they were excluded from the initial trials authorised by MHR, Medicines Healthcare Products Regulatory Authority, CDC, Health Canada, TGA, etc. Now, this study, um, it is published in a peer-reviewed journal. We'll look at that. 10 out of 13 women who were tested positive, tested positive for up to 45 hours. So that's what this is about. If you'd like to stay, uh, I'd love to have you with me. Now, just before, before you go, if you're a bit bored by the detail, let's just look at the uh, diagrams which are provided uh, in this research article. So what's happening here is that the vaccine is given locally into the arm. But then the uh, mRNA uh, LNPs, lipid nanoparticles, enter the bloodstream after administration and spread everywhere and probably spread in the lymphatics as well as the blood. So that's the first part of the illustration given uh, by these uh, researchers in this paper. Then the uh, mRNA lipid nanoparticles, the synthetic messenger ribonucleic acid, lipid nanoparticles are transported to the mammary glands, the breasts, via the bloodstream or possibly the lymphatics. This uh, is now known to happen. And then, of course, the uh, mRNA, synthetic mRNA, is packaged into these uh, so EVs, extracellular vesicles, secreted into the breast milk so in breast milk you've got you've got fat components you've got dissolved proteins but you've got these uh, extracellular vesicles these small compartments a bit like the body's own lipid nanoparticles actually that are in the breast milk and of course they're there for remarkably good reasons that the mother gives these to the uh, to the baby in actual fact probably what is happening here is this is a way for the mother to give rna to the baby naturally packaged in these uh, th th these little vesicles these extracellular vesicles so this is probably a natural process but of course <laughs> the mother giving her rna and giving synthetic rna are two completely different things in my view so that's what happens the uh, synthetic mrna packages 
in the extracellular vesicles goes into the BM, that's the breast milk. Now, this is what probably happens in the cells. So here we see that the um, what's happening here is the mRNA lipid nanoparticles enters the breast cell, the mammary epithelial cell that produces the milk. So it goes the it goes in and the RNA goes in. Uh, the vaccine mRNA is released into the cytosol, that's the liquid part, the clear part of the cell, um, the colloidal part of the cell. Now, some of that mRNA goes into developing extracellular vesicles or micro vesicles or exosomes of things that are excreted from the cell. Uh, other bits goes into these uh, multivesicles, in, into these va various things that are excreted by the, uh, by the breast uh, milk producing cells and of course these are all completely natural this is supposed to happen but it's supposed to contain components and mRNA from the mother not the synthetic form so pretty clear mechanism of action there as to how this is happening now let's go on to look at some of the detail here because it is really quite an interesting study so it's in e-biomedicine it's part of the Lancet science group the background is um Several vulnerable groups, as we've mentioned, were excluded from the trial. They weren't in the original trial, and yet the vaccine was given to them. So this is a bit of catch-up, really. And the possible passage of vaccine mRNA to breast milk was now confirmed, resulting from neonate, resulting in baby exposure. Neonatal exposure was not investigated. Now it is, and it's known to happen. As a result, limited research has been conducted. Pity it's happening three years or whatever it is, two and a half years later. It wasn't really done in the initial studies uh, they evaluated covid19 vaccine in mrna detectable breast milk after the mum had been uh, vaccinated and determined this is potential translational activity so the translational activity means um is it what was this mrna actually recruited into the baby cells to make um spike protein in the baby cells it looks like it wasn't but more on that in a minute so they collected uh, the milk. Uh, mums collected it at home, froze it. Um, always a bit difficult because you've got to get mums that are lactating at the time. But they collected breast samples from uh, milk samples from thirteen healthy postpartum. That means after birth women after the vaccine. Vaccine mRNA in whole breast milk uh, and extracellular vesicles was assayed. That just means examined um, uh, using. Quantitative PCR testing, a sophisticated PCR test. Quantitative means they could tell how much of the RNA was there. And its integrity, how intact the RNA was and whether it would still work in the baby, were uh, evaluated. Now, th 13 women receiving vaccines, 20 exposures, 20 exposures to the vaccine. Trace mRNA amounts were detected in 10 exposures up to 45 hours after the vaccine. So the fact that this is there means, as we've seen, that this was systemically uh, absorbed. The only way it could get from the arm to the breast is if it was being systemically uh, absorbed and circulating around the body. Otherwise, it couldn't possibly get to the, uh, to the breast. And of course, what this means is all these huge factories that are being built in Canada, my country, England, uh, Australia, uh, in the United States, to build huge amounts of mRNA for the future um, is now based on a completely flawed, in my view, fundamental scientific problem that these lipid nanoparticles containing the instructions to make the new vaccines or whatever it is will be systemically distributed, will be absorbed into cells, for example, say in the myocardium. Uh, the RNA from those lipid nanoparticles will go into cells, say in the vascular endothelium in the coronary vessels, will produce, in the case of COVID vaccine, spike protein, or if it was a flu vaccine, a flu antigen, and that's still going to cause an immunological response. It seems there is a completely fundamental scientific problem here, and yet this massive investment is going ahead looking to replace the traditional vaccines that have saved so many lives over the past 100 years or more. But the good thing about it is that the uh, the pharmaceutical companies will have new products, therefore they'll be patentable, therefore the income streams will be absolutely huge. A few fundamental scientific problems, but hey-ho.
Right, the mRNA, back to this study, <laughs> uh, was concentrated in the breast milk extracellular vesicles. This doesn't surprise me at all because these extracellular vesicles, part of their physiological function is to take RNA from the mother into the baby. And there it can stimulate things like the good uh, neuronal development of the baby and the development of the endocrine system in the baby. So this is a normal way that mum's genetics communicates with uh, breastfeeding baby's genetics. So it's not surprising that if there's an RNA around, it would be packaged into these, uh, into these extracellular vesicles. That doesn't surprise me uh, at all. But of course, this is synthetic RNA, not mum's natural RNA. Um, this is fiddling with the natural process, in my view. Uh, this can be significant as breast milk uh, extracellular vesicles act as natural lipid nanoparticles, as we've said, protecting mRNA from degradation. So the fact that this is a physiological process means that the mRNA in the uh, synthetic mRNA from the vaccine will be protected by the body's own lipid nanoparticles produced in the mother's breast. Uh, Milk-derived um, extracellular vesicles. Vesicle just means a fluid-filled space, really. That's all it means. Are resistant to uh, proteolysis. Proteoly that means digesting by the gastric and pancreatic enzymes uh, secretion. So they're not broken down. Um, that, that's the whole point, that they are designed... Uh, by uh, by the mother's breast to um, resist uh, degradation in the stomach so they can have a physiological activity in the baby. But of course, that's with mum's RNA, not with synthetic RNA. But unfortunately, it looks like the synthetic RNA can kind of hijack that, uh, that process. However, these e extracellular vesicles neither expressed uh, spike protein nor so they weren't expressing the spike protein so it doesn't look like the spike protein is going into the milk it looks like it's the rna that's going into the milk as far as i can gather from this paper uh, nor was it expressed in the ht29 cell line <laughs> guess a bit technical here but this this ht29 cell line is cells that you can basically buy they're used in a lot of types of research and they're actually derived from a colon cancer tumor back in 1964 and they've been kept ever since so that means they're basically immortal colon cells um, but of course i would be more worried about this being uh, absorbed before it got to the colon but that's what these come from colon cells they it is legitimate to use them because they do somewhat mimic the uh, properties of the enterocytes the cells that line the small intestine but what they're saying is that when, when the uh, the lipid nanoparticles containing the um, rna um, from the mother's breast were exposed to these cell lines this model it didn't produce spike protein but there again neither did the controls either so it could well be that this cell line was <coughs> inappropriate for that kind of uh, inappropriate for that kind of use um, but that's the one they used so it didn't induce spike protein in the cell line nor did their controls induce spike protein so that really doesn't tell us very much at all actually uh, vaccine mr in integrity was reduced to 12 to 25 percent so yeah a lot of it was degraded but some of it uh, wasn't now interpretation our findings demonstrate that covid19 vaccine is not confined to the uh, injection site this goes everywhere therefore this technology, in my view, until this problem is overcome, is fundamentally flawed. And because these particles are so small, I don't really see how you would stop them going everywhere. There's a fundamental problem with mRNA um, vaccine technology until the lipid nanoparticle systemic distribution problem is solved. And yet, as we've said, we're going ahead with all these hundreds of millions of pounds and dollars worth of investment <clears throat> but but spread systemically so it spreads all over the body and is packaged into um, breast milk extracellular vesicles we believe breast milk post vaccination is safe especially 14 hours after vaccination that is their current finding um, more work i would say though is needed on that um, given what they know uh, their well, I can't really say whether they're right or wrong on that. But as I've said, the main thing here is we do have the systemic distribution, which is the most concerning thing. And the RNA is in the breast milk. Um, and of course, a lot of this work is based on the cell culture, not on real live human beings.
Surely you would think that the CDC and the MHRA, AA, MHRA and the Therapeutic Goods Administration would launch immediate uh, large-scale epidemiological surveys to find this out. If they have launched those, I haven't heard of them. I'll keep you informed. See, if there's a theoretical problem identified in a small-scale study and identified in a laboratory, obviously that needs further research. But of course, further research could bring out facts which were, oh, I don't know, inconvenient. Further investigation is required to determine the minimum amount of mRNA needed. So even this little bit that gets through, maybe that is having a response in newborns. We simply uh, don't know. Um, since the minimum mRNA vaccine dose to elicit an immune reaction in children less than six months is unknown, again, we don't know that, then what it's saying is that mums and healthcare providers should have a chit-chat uh, before mothers are vaccinated if they're lactating. Um, now, OK, I can't imagine most healthcare providers would know. <laughs> it's not as if you're talking to some oracle from Delphi or some tablets of stone from Mount Sinai. Um, um, but, yeah, there could be new research that comes along, I suppose. But um, at the moment... I don't think we simply know. And if you don't know in medicine, then we should err on the side of caution. What is wrong with the precautionary principle? Don't guess. No. Before you intervene. There's an audacity to intervening. We need humility, not arrogance. Funding of this, not national, this was funded by the Department of Paediatrics, uh, Long, uh, this is in uh, Long Island, uh, Long Island near New York Medical School. So, pity this isn't a, a, a nationalised uh, CDC type study. mRNA COVID vaccines comprise lipid nanoparticles that contain mRNA coding for SARS coronavirus two protein as the active component, as we know, and they get everywhere. They just spread around. Relatively little has been reported on tissue localization of lipid nanoparticles after intramuscular injection. Well, we're reporting on it now. We get systemic spread. It goes around the body. Following intramuscular administration, the uh, vaccine lipid nanoparticles were rapidly disseminated to several organs. Well, we now know that. Where they could potentially cause an inflammatory reaction just by nature of the lipid nanoparticles. And of course... The RNA could produce antigens, which would stimulate further inflammatory and potentially cell-destroying activity from the cytotoxic T cells. That's what cytotoxic T cells do. Potential translational activity were not fully evaluated. In other words, whether that's producing, in this case, um, spike protein in the baby looked like it wasn't, but that wasn't fully evaluated. But given that this happens physiologically, um, I think probably some more work needs to be done on that. So let's just close with these pictures. There is systemic distribution. It does go to the breast. It does go into the breast milk. Babies drink it. And that's how it goes into the breast milk. The RNA goes into the breast milk. Evidence of systemic distribution. I would therefore as a result that we now know about the systemic distribution, call on a uh, review of the huge investment that has been made uh, into new mRNA technologies, or falling short of that, that the people building these factories give us really good reasons why lipid nanoparticles will not be systemically distributed in their new uh, products. But to quote Star Trek, you couldn't change the laws of physics. You know, these things are so tiny, they just go everywhere. We'll leave it there for today. It is a concern. And uh, let us, us as a human race, proceed with uh, humility. Although I don't think there's much chance of that. But uh, thank you for watching.